Good day. My name is Hermann Wittenberg, and I would like to tell you a little bit more about the English department at the University of the Western Cape. The focus of our department is literary studies, that is the study of uh, fictions, poems, plays, novels, short stories written in English or in translation from all over the world. English is now the, the most dominant a global language, also of creative expression. And uh, we believe in the English department that the study of fiction, of, of creative work, is one of the best ways with, in which we can uh, gain insight into contemporary society, into our history, and what makes us, uh, what, what makes us human beings. Besides literature, we also study film and performance and we have a growing and highly successful creative writing program both at honors level uh, undergraduate level honors level going all the way up to a phd and many of our students are now published writers but instead of telling you about the department, let me rather let colleagues and students speak uh, for themselves about their experience of studying English at the University of the Western Cape. I'm Courtney Davids and I'm a lecturer in the English department and I teach across the undergrad as well as postgrad years. Um, my interests are 19th century, 18th century literature, but also modernist texts, modernist poetry also especially. And I've been teaching in the English department um, for six years now. Oh my word, six <laughs> years, yes. But I was also a student at UWC so many, many years ago when I was, you know, just a, a very, very young, 17. Um, I came to UWC as a first year student and English literature was one of my subjects. And in fact, it was the only subject that made sense to me at the time. The rest was philosophy <laughs> and anthropology and history. Not that I'm knocking those disciplines, they're great. I came to enjoy them later. But English literature, that was my passion. And I think that uh, it was probably rooted in, you know, my love for reading. I'm sure that any one of us would be able to say that. The reason why we would love to pursue English literature as a subject is it's rooted in our, our love for reading. And so mine began very early, and I'm not going to torture you with too many details, but when I was five already, I just, I, it was an escape for me. It was a, it was a different world, you know, to my reality. and. And I always just enjoyed delving into beautiful words on a page, you know. And when I became a, a, a lecturer in the department, it was to be able to convey that love for words on a page and how just a sentence can transport one, you know, completely into, into a different world, dream, journey, you know. And, and it's always just been an exciting never-ending love for literature for me. <laughs> Thank you. I think that reminds me of Rudyard Kipling's words, the, the author of the, the Jungle Book, which, which may, yes. maybe many of our students know from primary school days. Um, Rudyard Kipling said that, that um, words are the most powerful drug known mm. to mankind mm. Mm. <laughs> forget about <laughs> forget, forget about alcohol or, or <laughs> things you smoke or whatever it's true you know words are mind altering they change mm -hmm. change you mm -hmm. profoundly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yes that's true maybe yeah. share with us just uh you know what do you enjoy teaching in the department english department at the moment maybe, maybe just give us some insights behind the scenes what do you do and and what what makes this so interesting and rewarding uh, for you? Uh, well, it's, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is poetry. Um, I love teaching poetry. It's just, just not just reading it, teaching it, being able to convey, you know, the deeper meanings, you know, because we don't just do, you know, surface reading in English literature. We 
to close reading. And that's when words, language, the language behind those words, the, the, the silences even, you know, within poetry, you know, silence in a line, something that is not being said, that's when it becomes truly alive. And when one can convey that, when one shares that with students, um, whether it's, you know, whatever space it is, or whether it's in a consultation, that is something truly powerful yeah. when, one, when one can share um, um, those meanings in literature. And um, poetry does that. Poetry is, is and, and as well as, um, as literary, other literary texts, but for me, poetry just seems to be the one thing that students enjoy more than anything else. <laughs> Although they'll say, not always, you know, some poetry seems to, you know, just kind of shut them down. But otherwise, they they do experience, um, you can see that light, I would say, that absolute light that comes on, on you, you know, in their eyes, where they, where they can, where they can engage with something that they, that they can relate to and connect with. So. Mm. Lovely. And yes, poetry is not just found in poems, right? Poetry yes, is yes, found exactly. everywhere. Isn't yes. that so? Yes. yes, yes, music. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Dante Cox. Um, so I studied at, at Campsbury High School for five years, up to matric, and then I've always had a keen interest in reading, language studies, and this is the reason why I decided to go to UWC um, to study English and language studies specifically. So well, the first two years have been the best years, I think, of my life at UWC. I can't imagine myself having went anywhere else. Although, I mean, there were other options when I was in matric, but UWC certainly was the best option for me. Um, I feel like I had a bit of everything. I've had my literature, I had my language, humanities and science. So I've had quite a, an all-rounder experience. It was a lot of fun learning things that are actually applicable in human life. The, most, the, the best thing that I found in studying the humanities was the ability to just pick things up out in the human world um, and just be able to identify it. So if I did a story in the newspaper and it sounded like the story of Oedipus, I could just relate it and just that's something so profound to me and something I really appreciate. Okay. Even like I did journalism as well. When I'm reading a newspaper article, I could, I can immediately see what is this kind of paragraph, who's speaking, what kind of things are being said. So that's the thing. So humanities are, I think, the best thing that you could study as a grounding in life. So my name is Nandu Mpoma, as you might have just heard. Um, and I matriculated in 2013 from New Forest High in KZN in Montclair. Um, yeah, and when I was still in high school, when I was applying for university, I kind of was on an application frenzy. I applied to a bunch of places, except for KZN, because I was like, I'm tired of KZN, I want to leave KZN. So I applied to Gauteng and I applied to um, the Western Cape. Um, yeah, and I was really like a maths, science and English buff in high school. So when I applied, everybody was telling me, do science, physics and all of that. And I applied for, like when I went to other universities, I applied for your chemical engineering. And at Stellenbosch, I remember I applied for agriculture and food science. Um, and at UWC, I was like, here, I'm gonna apply for something artistic. Cause I also did visual arts and I was just really good at it. And when I applied at UWC, I thought that, I thought that they'd have a visual arts course. <laughs> That was not true. <laughs> so I applied for a BA at UWC. And when I, I did my final for matric, um, I didn't do so well in math and science, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, and <laughs> my family was on some, you should just go and rewrite. And I just wasn't feeling like going and rewriting. And I had done so well in the rest of my subjects and I already had an acceptance to UWC and nobody was speaking about UWC at my school. So I knew most people weren't going to UWC because it was just an unknown university in KZN. And I was like, okay, I'm going to this place that nobody knows and yeah, I'm set on it. <laughs> yes, so next for me, 
it has just become academia. <laughs> so um, right now I'm just trying to get through my proposal and once I get that out of the way then it's just trying to complete the PhD and start writing some articles I guess and yeah try to find some uh, like an appointment at a university <laughs> so that's what's next okay wow and um, so Karisha tell me what are you doing now since you like nine years ago of doing, doing your <laughs> English three so I, I actually tutored at UWC for a little bit um, in the EED course. And then after that, I went, um, I had this passion for publishing and magazines. So I actually worked at Owl Magazine. And after that, I then jumped over to Associated Media Publishing. Um, and I worked on amazing brands there like Cosmopolitan, SA, um, House and Leisure. And unfortunately now, due to COVID, um, the company liquidated. And then a few of my colleagues and I, just had these skills and we had such a great team and we've actually started our own little company. So we started a little digital agency where we're serving little startup companies. We've worked with some uh, bigger brands, even bigger companies, um, servicing social media, websites, um, everything digital. So we called Aurora Online. Even though I'm not really in the field, um, academia field anymore, I still learn so much doing um, postgraduate research, even though I'm in digital there's so many opportunities where I have to research and I go back to all of those techniques that I did when I was uh, a student so wow so no regrets doing English studies at a university <laughs> no I miss it so much I do miss being a student and I don't have that much time to read now but I, I still make time even though I'm busy I still find a time to pick up a book and still read I still have that passion and that energy for it so I, I do miss it I then matriculated in 2011 and I decided to go and study at university. Unfortunately, my parents had saved enough. I was the first, I am the first uh, graduate in my family and the eldest sibling, so there was still some money for me to do that. And um, I wanted to go to UCT like the rest of my friends, but uh, who studied accounting and who went into um, a medicine. But UCT insisted I do maths again, and I hated maths. And since I wanted to pursue a PA, there was no need for that. Thankfully, there was UWC, which welcomed me, supported me, and I started my journey at UWC in 2012. Um, I'm and looking back, working. yeah, look, looking back, any regrets uh, studying at UWC? Oh. How, how was that as an experience? I was going to get there, I was going to say that it, it's probably one of the best decisions I made to choose to come to UWC. Initially, I was a bit um, overwhelmed because it's not its not the environment I was, I was familiar with. UWC was very diverse and I grew up in a little bubble. So um, that was a good thing because I met uh, friends and colleagues from different corners of the globe and of Cape Town. It, it's, it's actually one of, being exposed to UWC helps me in my job today. Because if I hadn't um, become friends with people who grew up on the Cape Flats who couldn't come to classes sometimes because there was gang related shooting in the area, I wouldn't have had an understanding of the police needs at the ground level. And I currently work for the city of Cape Town, the safety and security director, where I'm an advisor. Um, and a lot of the work I do looks at um, assisting communities and residents with their safety requirements. Um, so no, no regrets to BWC is what got me to where I am today. And um, I, I have only good memories of BWC. It's not only the level of education that I got there, but it's also the, the teachers, the lecturers, the tutors. Um, I can take you through my, my journey since 2012 until 2020, if you like. Well, um, just in, in, in summary, I mean, it's, 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 it's really fantastic to, to hear that. Um, and you, you, you graduated with a, with a master's after uh, doing um, honors uh, at, at UWC, is that, that correct? And then, uh, and, and tell me about your master's thesis and, and, and maybe keep it, uh, you know, try to explain it in, in ways that, that our grade 11 and 12 learners can understand. <laughs> sure. So I, um, I pursued my master's in 
uh, English literature, uh, a master's full thesis, which is really just a, a, a big essay, about 40,000 words of essay. And uh, I did it on, on, a, on an author whose books I really love. His name is Amitabh Ghosh. Thank you.